Hello everyone, I am Sakai Samurai and welcome to the Genshin Impact Lore series. So this is a new series I'm going to be starting here on my channel and I'm hoping to have a lot of fun, you know, just messing with the stories of the Genshin Impact characters, destinations and whatever really we can get into. Something kind of fun on the side for us to do here on the channel. So without further ado, let's get into it. Whether it be her cute red bow on her head, or her genuinely helpful nature, it's not hard to quickly pick up that Amber is a passionate and law-abiding character within the world of Genshin Impact. She truly does stride for a better world, and most of all, for a better Mondstadt. Even if it means that she carries around a little doll that weirdly looks like her, and uh, oh yeah, it's also a ticking time bomb that blows up and catches people on fire. Um. I don't know why she has that, but Amber is the last outrider of the Knights of Favonius, and it doesn't take long for the main hero, oh, that's us, to quickly sweep her up into a growing group of e-girls, I, I, I mean, friends. She strides in an age where her job is seemingly more and more obsolete, yet she still loves her job as a dutiful peacekeeper, though it wasn't always like that. In fact, young Amber was actually a well-known troublemaker going as far as to light a DENDRO SLIME ON FIRE?! <laughs> Along with some smaller things like stealing bird eggs out of a nest. Yeah, we're just gonna casually glaze over that. Young Amber was well known for her quick speed and lightning fast reflexes. Though earning those traits, uh, she got them in less favorable ways than she likes to lead on to. She developed a lot of these skills mainly while avoiding and dashing away from guards when she needed to quickly get herself out of trouble because she constantly found herself in these types of situations. This built her a reputation amongst various hunter camps and not really in a good way. So to help keep Amber out of trouble, her grandfather was always there to help keep up on watch ready to sweep her away from falling into any more mischief that she was bound to end up in. Her grandfather, though known for his sternness, was a huge influential character in young Amber's childhood. He was, for the most part, all she had in terms of family, and in her own words, she described her grandfather's love as a gentle warm breeze that wrapped around her like a blanket. His unconditional yet silent love was all she needed most in her life. He never judged her, in fact he fully loved her and embraced exactly who she was as a person. And this was something that Amber always cherished deep down inside. And it was what she needed most growing up, even if she didn't always show it. Her grandfather, however, wasn't always what he cracked up to be. Just like Amber, in his younger years, he was far from a do-gooder. He was the leader of a mercenary group, hailing from the faraway bustling ports of Liyu Harbor. While tasked on serving as protection for traveling merchants, Amber's grandfather and his team was attacked by a savage wild creature, leaving him severely injured, but he was still breathing. The others, however, not so much. Lucky to be alive, he was nursed back to health by a doctor who also served as a Knight of Favonius. Completely broken and ashamed to return to his old life after this, he set off the train as a knight. Not long after, with vigorous expertise, he himself went on to single-handedly form the Outriders and started a family of his own in his new, much more honorable lifestyle. During the day, as her grandfather trained knights for battle, Amber would watch on in awe, completely engrossed by the Outriders' combat drills. She would watch each move carefully, studying and learning their tactics as he taught only to later return that night to train herself, trying to reenact her grandfather's work. Already at a young age, she wanted to become something far greater and truly stride to become like her grandfather. Upon finding out, her grandfather was so struck by her passion that he decided it was time to teach her as well, taking the extra time to bring her into the lessons as well, so that one day she too could become an outrider like him. Sometime about four years ago, Amber's life would be permanently changed forever. Waking up one morning to learn her grandfather all but vanished. Within his office lied his armor and his trusty sword, completely untouched, still laying there, and there was absolutely zero traces left as to where he could have gone. He left no note 
or even a last goodbye, Amber's life would immediately become vastly more difficult after this. Not only did she lose her beloved grandfather and her hero, but the Knights of Favonius lost the man who is the entire backbone of their operations. Leaving Amber, who was just a freshly recruited initiate, in a scattered mess of a team, who quickly lost everything that made them who they were. They became undisciplined, poor fighters, lazy, and above all, completely unfit for duty. After mission failure and after mission failure, the Outriders would soon delve into obscurity, with remaining experienced Outriders reassigned to different roles or simply quitting, leaving numbers so low that missions could no longer be sent to the team as there was no hope for any type of success. If things weren't bad enough for her, rumors began to spread around that her grandfather was actually a defect and deserted the Knights for his own causes leaving troop morale to be even lower than before. With this hitting Amber hard, Amber was completely struck with grief, forced to live in this emotional roller coaster. This was truly the first time that Amber had dealt with so much loss in her life. For the normal person, this would have absolutely destroyed them. But for her, she didn't give up. In fact, she was so confident that she ditched any emotional drag on her and turned all of her energy into perfecting her training and her craft, using her grandfather's teachings to show she truly had the same spirit as him. She went on to lead the Outriders as the final member, the last Outrider. And through the next few years, she would do nothing but impress her senior officers, perfecting tasks and showcasing her finesse in battle. As she matured, so did her mentality. Being met with mixed feedback, whether it be praise or honor, or really downright mockery and spite, Amber's attitude never changed. She always met them with a smile, and she showed she truly believed in her cause. Today, she still carries on in her grandfather's legacy, believing he's still out there, somewhere in the world perhaps watching over and admiring just who she has became. She knows that one day she will find him, and even more than that, that one day she'll be as legendary and instrumental as he was, and go on to lead a much more greater and far stronger Outriders. But until that day, uh, well, she, uh, she lights Dendro Slime still on fire, they're still running around, they need help. And uh, she nearly get oh yeah, and she nearly gets arrested for flying illegally, and I mean that like a lot. I mean I don't even want to hear about this, this flight license crap ever again, especially after learning she's failed multiple times. Who 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 set her up to be my flight instructor? We could have died. We oh okay, so look, we all know you got your driver's license revoked for having a DUI while you were flying around with Venti, the god of drunkenness. But that, that. That's a story for another day. All right, everyone. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I hope that, it's becoming, that this will become the beginning of something amazing here on the channel. I fully intend to keep weekly videos flowing in, and if you're interested, we will be live streaming here on this channel as well. So if you want to get in on the next Fancy Hot Tub stream, uh, <clears throat> or you want to check out my Code Vein series coming up, subscribe for more. Seriously, guys, thank you, everyone. I will see you guys in the next one. Away!